it. Definitely one of his best champs, if not his best champs. All right, guys, game four. Very, very strong on it. Also, Lahen's just known for his unique. I mean, this is the Hopefully, you guys took that break. Now, right? yeah. uh, we've seen him bring out the Maokai. Get a drink of water. Take care of yourself. Healthy foods. An extra utility for his team. And now, you know, you have to see how the early game is going to go for FlyQuest because when you look towards the picks here for Gen G, really the yeah, it's about sustained energy and productivity over time. I like how relaxed inspired is. It is Rakan Ezreal, very weak Business as usual. That has been drafted for FlyQuest. Keep the jokes going. You really Have you heard this, the comms, the shot calls from this team? Lock it in. All right, we got this. Go up. We can take this push. Let's step up a little bit. Bait out this effect. If we, if nothing happens, we win the game. Let's go up. Take it step by step, little by little. Right? Cool, concise, and effective communications. Some Something that we still see from Eastern teams. Go, 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 go. I've got this. I'll, I'll, no flash, no flash, no flash, no flash. Right? You see someone say it quickly and repeat it. That is much less effective than saying, Ezreal, no flash. Say it once quickly and that's it. Go in Ezreal. He's got no flash. Something that tells the message, do it quickly. You only need to say it once. You do not need to repeat because repeating can actually do the same effect. Thinking in your game when someone spam pings, your brain can start just turning off and desensitizing to it. Make sure you're staying cool, calm, and collected. He spots. Right now, if you're a coach on Gen G, you need your star players to to shine brightly. You need to get the most out of them. They need to look to carry. You need to tell Canyon, Pays, and Chovy, and specifically Chovy and Pays. We are going to match their lanes no matter what this game, and we are going to diff them. We are going to show them why we are the best team in the world, why we are the best players in the world at our positions. I want them to go in with that mindset that they're going to dominate. That's why I love this Tristana pick. It's why I love this Nidalee pick. You're giving people the champion, the, the skin, world's skins for, for Canyon on his Nidalee. Super comfort. Chovy's been playing Tristana all year. You're happy to take the all-in into Orianna. That said, if Orianna gets the ball on in, in response to the jump from Tristana can land her R, she can turn that fight. In early game, she can put an extra point into the E, just defect, deflect some of that extra damage from an all-in. Usually it's not worth compared to getting the extra points in the in the Q and the W, which have such good scaling, uh, playing for the end, but it is a tool that's available. When we look later in the game, we've got Rakan for shields, Orianna for shields. Expect to see Inspired do the same sort of job for his team. We've got Masu on Ezreal, not as much of a playmaker as... The Callista, the Kaisa, and the Ash, but the Ash is already in the hands of Pays. If I'm Fly, I don't want to tell my team that you need to get out of these lanes. I want you to play. I expect the other, other team to just go front to back on us. Uh, but we can take this. We can take Ezreal in this spot. All right, Maokai, basically one spell. That's all he has to contribute to a fight. If he doesn't land for Aftershock, then you have the potential to go all in, and you have the extra damage from Ezreal stacking. So now Ash is showing. I expect Renekton to go over to the other side of the map. We've got an all-in right here, but but Rakan's in position, guys. That's a flash down from Tristana. I like the idea from Chovy. Uh, we've seen this from him before, that he is willing to go W first and say, hey, I'm not going to play for just like putting the, the wave in your face. I'm going to try to get even more. I'm going to jump on you and try to kill you. Try to get an actual HP lead because I am the greatest and I'm going to defeat you. And you can hate us because they ain't us, but I'm going to dance like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Choose your Muhammad Ali quote. I am going to be that guy. I am him. That's where that came from. I am him. All right, Rakan comes over, comes over, gets an exploitative play here. We do have a resource advantage now for the Oriana. Having that flash means that Sidrani could try to path over here. Ash going for the early pressure here. They do put Renekton and Rakan, which means that if they get stuck in a lane swap here, then we might have problems. Hold on, pays another flash down. Rakan being aggressive. Does he not have access to his Eve? It looks like he used it to move forward. Hold on, they might get Maokai. Uh, Oriana can move over to, to this play. Tristana's going to start pathing up this way to, to block. That's another flash. Guys, look at the flashes. One, two, three. Down. Do you think Gen G cares? They want this so bad, and they are trying to win on an individual level. And Rakan is moving over and say, I will be the glue. Ezreal's fine by himself. We're totally happy playing Ezreal into Cassante. 
Shovi is getting pressured here by Quad. Shovi, There's a lot of resources going down. Ash Flash being down is a big, big, big deal. Now, Kinsante. This team is notorious for giving this this player this champion because of how safe he is into these positions, and it allows them to play for the star power. And that's exactly what they want from this draft. You can tell that Gen G is riding that, right? I'm going to give Nidalee their world championship skin. I'm going to put Chovy on the champion. He's played most of this entire season with along with Corky, but they feel Tristana is stronger. I'm going to put Pays on Ash because that is the single best character to have in a draft in this format, in this metagame. So let's give Kinsante just the weak side champ over here. Renekton has been seen as a counterpick. Renekton can take these fights, can take it to the Kisante, uh, especially levels two and three, which is something that they dodged. So they got out of that spot. But the trade-off was that Ezreal got so low experience. So this Ezreal is going to be bigger than the Ash and willing and able to take this fight. And perhaps Masu, if he's able to control his aggression, can say, I can take calculated calculated plays and aggression here but you have to be careful because ash took the first recall has that extra long sword that's going to make up for the difference in the level here and especially once they get level four this will be favored for them and expect them to try to engage if that situation does occur from knocking out a heavy tournament favorites you have to look at how much they have improved at how hard they have worked to be able to get where they are certainly and uh it just goes to show the amount of pressure. All right, if you're inspired, you're trying to counter any play here. You don't need to do anything. You're not trying to overplay into Nidalee. You're basically trying to say, where are your laners trying to be the most aggressive? I want to go march for this. I don't need to play for a kill on Dakin. Keen already has tons of pressure on him, guys. One and two. This guy has lost three times in every quarterfinals he's ever played. You better believe that he's feeling the pressure. There's the trade that we just talked about with the Oriana. Stealing camps away from auto attack qw on the tristana landing spot auto and get the e back onto yourself you make sure that the tristana doesn't get the full effect of the bomb popping and you negate some of the damage by having the ball for the resistance and having the extra shield while dealing the most amount of damage back so quad playing confidently has the flash advantage but hasn't turned this into anything else uh, and really unless you're really threatening tristana on the no flash it doesn't really do you any good if Chovy's still willing and able to gap here. Right, they're bringing Rakan over, which means that they're trying to get a reset for Quad. Uh, has already taken the one recently, teleported, has the tier. This is the narrative that FlyQuest has said, we're going to allow this. We're going to allow you to take Void Grubs, and we're going to try to outscale you and never let you touch a turret. And hey, if you want to go for comfort or your double AD carry plus Nidalee, you've got a super squishy team, and if we can just hold down the fort and out scale then you, like we have a sejuani in the front you're never going to be able to step forward enough this is a lot of poke ash nidalee poke sapling poke tristana threatening for the all-in and or the peel they they are going to be willing to play this front to back for a long time so is it is it going to be a choice of letting Ezreal sit back and say, hey, you're coming to us? I don't think that's going to be the case. And in fact, they outscale you if it comes down to poke fights. Oriana gets outranged. Ezreal can match, but it's just one Q compared to the Ash W and the Nidalee Q. And if there's any sort of commit, Tristana has a better peel tool. Uh, a lot of damage here going on to Masu. Keen knows what he can do here, guys. Look at this damage. He's going to get this kill. And Busio feels helpless. Yeah, this is the difference between... The best Cassantes in the world, they know that they've got that. And the new changes, obviously it's a new champion on live, but the changes that they're playing on are the ones where it's slightly more aggressive when you're in all out. And we've seen Cassantes get solo kills like this, and that was a 1v2 into into the carry that was supposed to be your strong point remember this ezreal had solo experience to start the game there's the e going down chip damage busio didn't block it remember we saw busio shaking right now he feels pretty helpless too flash would not do anything for him so he elects to hold on to it but that over aggressive shift is punished expertly by keen how many times that was just off of a chain vest guys players usually it's top laners disrespect Cassante with his third in topo strike prime with Dude, i don't know if it's always top laners i think it's carries that that 
it is one of the deadliest combos in League of Legends. I think Captain Flowers is saying that it's top laners that disrespect it, and sure, he does get huge, and he often gets solo kills, solo kills especially on his Iceborne Gauntlet, but it's the AD carries that don't realize it. It's the AD carries that we've seen most of the blowout plays this tournament. They show up thinking, hey, I got a lot of resources into me. We, we lane swapped, and I'm feeling pretty big. Kasante is the stickiest of the ickiest. He will stick onto you every single time. Uh, it is still a level up from Ezreal. He's going to try to take this advantage. He has Longsword plus Sheen. He's going to be stacking up his mana, so he's okay here. He's still going to be fine into the Ash. Ash is going to play for range. You see that Ash goes for the Berserker Greaves, thing that I want to be able to dodge in and out of fights. Uh, Renekton has to recalibrate as well. Even though he has a CS lead, that kill from Kasante means that he's just fine. Right, and if you just look at the gold in the inventory, 2,000 gold spent on top of the Dorans compared to the 1,100. So Renekton's going to go try to get a little bit of a chip. Flash down, and, and they got the kill. That's huge. All right. Summoner spell, that's down. FlyQuest has a lot to lean on right now. So Inspired's going to be in position. They're going to play strong through him over and over and over. Just stone stone the nidalee right this is a call that they had when they had the scion pick uh scion let me let me stone their front all right let me stone them stone this guy they'll pick a character and say that one i don't want that character to get through this line that's what they do with inspired on sejuani or on skarner Mm, I don't know about Locket. I don't like Locket. Locket in this game, there's not enough spread AoE damage the way that there would be if they're a mage. It's a lot of poke. Locket is useless against poke. And if it's an all-in, like, you like your team comp against theirs. Sejuani, Renekton, Rakan is going to be super happy to play front in, into an engage where Nidalee jumps in on Cougar form, for example. Or if Maokai comes in with the ultimate and they, they say all or nothing, come forward. Maybe it's maybe it's the defensive tool that you need to to stop the Cassante. Hold on, Boipo going ultimate early, making sure that he doesn't get locked up for this. Chain CC. Q's right before the red bar. Uh, a little bit unlucky there. First, the proc on the W ends up going for damage instead of getting the extra heal from the Q. And then by the time he's able to get the Q off, it's not on the empowered red bar, and he still succumb. It's just kind of. A good effective dive here. Whippo fast and loose the way that we love it. Keep it, keep the the zoomies up. But going to be a little bit tough. Going to be a little bit tough. Ash is getting big. Cassante is getting big. Tristana's tiny. That's normally our main win condition. This is a uh, Chovy Tristana that we've convinced to buy Merc Treads, by the way. That's how much he's afraid of of the rest of the sequence, which makes sense, I suppose. If Sejuani, Oriana as a combination, so Mark Treads is already going to have high value. Plus Renekton, who's going to try to dive on top of you. It stops the stun, a little bit of his magic damage. And then we have the charm from Rakan. So, you know, it's fine. It's maybe just compositionally, this was always going to be Mark Treads. But Tristana's damage is going to be lower. Another reason why this lot, well, maybe the locket gains a little bit more value. If it's going to be slow damage from Tristana, maybe we're okay. What you cannot have, the one thing you cannot have, is a five stack bomb or full stack bomb from Tristana into the middle of a team. Right? You can be playing front to back and you say, hey, let's like consolidate our fight, let's consolidate our position. But if Tristana is ever able to get a full stack bomb off and pop it onto the whole team, they will win the fight. So you have to be very, very careful about items like Locket that are saying, hey, we'll let the fight come to us and reposition because you might not be able to reposition in these fights. You're going to have to keep a very a very uh, distinct formation to make sure that they can't just jump on top of you. Their team comp is based around this. Sante taking the long angle over Busio. Does he have anything? There's the Locket to keep him alive. Okay. Already, I guess it's paying dividends once, and Renekton did not need to show for this. Renekton's going for bot wave. He says that we're going to give up some plates here in the mid lane, and I'm going to trade them for bot. But is it actually worth it? This is really, really tough position to be in uh, because they're definitely getting those two plates, and it's on a higher priority target. This, this right here, most important turret in the game. That Gen -G has as well. They're keeping they also never had to give up any of the uh, amount of flex. It also completely negates the fact that they had vision in this area because they just made an aggressive play through mid. No rotation through the sides means that they get to play. Enemy team has to over consolidate on defense. Whippo ends up not even touching this turret. So a huge win from Genji here. 
Again, like I mentioned last game, if you're a flat quest, if you're a coach in the back room, the wind does not exist. You only have a job to do if there's a loss. If there's a win, you have a whole week to do whatever you need to do next. Maybe you can spend time the night before preparing, hey, what will I tell my team if we win? But right now, when you're in that war room, you're trying to figure out, okay, if we lose, why did we lose? What can we do to change it? All right, we like our draft, but what are we giving up? I don't like that, we're giving, that we keep giving up Ash. Ash is the premium pick in the metagame. I want to see answers for this every single time. It also has the hawk shot that hawk shot can completely counter any of these proactive plays that we see from flag quest all right genji's up we've got a dragon we've got more or uh, even on dragons and unvoid grubs slightly better one in the pocket of flag quest but you feel that they've been pinched to their own side of the map they haven't had the river ever since they came and tried to get wards on this side they haven't gotten anything else for themselves in fact they got punished for being gone enemy team was able to push up and encroach without any penalty because you're late to the rotation fly doesn't want to be late we saw what they did side to side pendulum movements they want to be moving their team strong side to strong side rotating based on where the buff is and where the objective is they may have to play a little bit more from behind and say hey we can give rift Herald live to fight another day Cheryl is not the object objective it used to be. 300 experience to the Nidalee, a little bit of extra gold, not that big of a deal. Let's go and get the guaranteed resource for ourselves. Uh, look at this, they're trying to set a trap for Chovy, but Chovy pins and pings him out. How did he know? How did he know? Is he just pinging it because he's thinking like, yeah, this is if they're going to be anywhere, this is where they're going to be? That could easily be a plan. I don't know that they saw him. Should just knock it over by itself. Kaboom! Oh, it needs one more auto attack to do it. Oh wow! Oh. Okay, Masu saves the day. The turret has literally. That's first brick. So that's a that is a chunk of gold. It's not a big and like consequential. Hold on. Lock it. Save quad. No, he's dead. Go jumping over the back. Has the wherewithal to reposition the fight. They need to take this. They need to take the rest of this fight. This is no flash on on Tristana. Boom. Done. Can you get a second one? canyon flash down okay we call back we reposition we control this side of the map and we say we're going to play for baron four minutes from now that seems like a little bit too far look at all this vision right here they're going to have to swing it back to this side maokai's already over there though already setting up vision i think after a win like this you want to be a little bit stronger and it actually would have been perfect if they could have responded to this teleport with full action i believe keen knows that there's just no play like that for him though constantly taxing your resources elsewhere Quad gets spotted on awards he's thinking about heading back to top lane bit of indecision as the collapse they knew tristana was there was he he was baiting like look at this rokan position and sejuani position they think that they have enough here but it's just barely not enough inspired trying to get right on top of the oriana to block as many tristana autos as possible we had masu couldn't get that kill I thought that red buff would have been enough. He didn't get it. This crowd is ready to erupt, guys. We're down 2k. Keen is huge. 1-0-1 in this position. Uh, Chovy is playing like he's the best player in the world. Even though he's down 2-0, willing to take that extra step. The fact that Nidalee got that kill, though, means that Canyon's going to be the one that's going to play for this. Hold on, they catch the hands on a rotation. They, he was alone long enough setting up that vision. He should not have been here. They were here with plenty amount of time to step back. And this is what we knew FlyQuest was going to do. They go strong side to strong side. They just reverse fields, just like you would do on a basketball court or a soccer field. Hold on, that's an ult under turret. But he got his ultimate off, right? So he's going to be okay. He kills the wave. He can, and he gets out. Multiple ults being used, but now Canyon's in position. Ah, oh, he just got hit. <gasps> he tried to Q and flash. All right, Tristan is peeling back. We've got we've got flash heal from Rakan. We've got decent position. You can't step up. No, no, no. Don't take any don't take any free hits. Okay. You can hold enough with two man defense. Sejuani's looking for a wrap. You might say that we have low enough resources on the on the Sejuani. Inspired's feeling really strong. We have Pryo from mid lane, but Malachi's coming over. But this is a whiff. That's a huge ult to be down. Quad does not have his ultimate to fight back on this. You have to be really really careful that you don't overcommit because 
because the mid laner does not have enough resources to carry the rest of the fight, and Rakan spent some amount of time fighting back for vision. They tried to go strong to strong, expect him to come back over here. We've got this blue buff, we've got the dragon in four minutes. You have to leave something that can see this part of the map, so expect to see mid lane prio, bot lane side, try to get like a teleport ward, something like this, keep it up and available, make sure that it's in a spot that won't get spotted, that won't get marked. He gets his ultimate off just in time, that's beautiful. Tristana coming in, trying to deflect the most amount. Beautifully done. Comes back over, they realize that this is being swept out. The fact that he got hit, that's too bad. That, that was due to the increased model size, by the way, from the ultimate. Now he's looking and he's, wa he's watching the flash and the zonius right there, so they don't even get anything back. Scary, scary, scary. High pressure, 3k gold lead. They have an extra k, uh, extra k in pocket. Quest might be up a single Drake, but it's three turrets to nothing for Gen G. That is a huge part of this 3,000 gold. Can they hold the fort? Tristana playing super, super aggressively. Yeah, he's far forward in the enemy jungle, but more importantly, somehow, well, Chovy down two kills. Not surprising that he's down in CS, but still the fact that he's able to have 174 despite dying twice is testament to how good he is at farming. Flyquest barely have access into the river as the mid is being pushed in, top is being pushed in, Lahens is continuing to extend his vision line forward meanwhile the right, quad stepping back no he's not he's a little bit late to this access they want to ensure that they get that this that was the first panic moment that i can see from inspired you never want to take this before 20 minutes that was a smite at 1950 it's a dead all right i need to see zeke's from here all right you are just you are just a stun bot and a backline peel bot trying to look for some sort of a counterplay on top side but they just can't find it front to back on the rest maybe you can get a delivery but you have to be able to hold people in place long enough right you need to turn on that ultimate slow people down dash onto the back oriana ball gets onto you and you go for the rest it's gonna be really tough to chew through this Cassante though it looks like they skip all right that was an ultimate from keen just to get himself back in but this is a lot of cc and they might choose to take the rest of this damage core orion is in place recon's coming tristana has no teleport so they should call for this if they have accurate cooldown tracking they know that they can go for it but they end up calling back they decide that they can't go the rest of the way dragons up in a minute 45 baron has the one defensive ward interesting pit by the way this is the one that has the most openings uh, and you can see that Lucio is very much tracking for that objective Lucio's still shaking look at this he I almost feel bad for the guy, but if we're talking about it from a team perspective, we need to get we need to help that guy get control of his emotions. Because he's had that roller coaster of oh my god, we might win. Oh my god, I might have lost it for my team when we were winning. Right, that is one of the biggest traps because it goes up and your body realizes it can relax, but it never really resolves the fact that you thought that you might have been responsible for your team. Someone needs to tell you it's okay. Someone on the outside, team captain, someone that you care about needs to tell you that you're okay, you're enough, we just need you. Right, Ezreal being used uh, for chip, I don't really like that against a Nidalee. Nidalee can just heal herself back up and they're going back for this. I'd rather see it used for... Oh, hold on. Whippo, what angle did you take there? It's because he didn't want to get ulted out, I suppose. They're going to go for this. We see the teleport being blocked. They might be able to, to answer the fight here. If they say overcommit, step forward. They step forward. Quad dodges it. Now go on Chovy. Now go on Chovy. He just committed forward. All right, now, now you have to try to burst the uh, Cassante. You don't have it. Again, Rakan is nowhere to be found. Rakan has been out of this game. He has constantly been setting up for what's next, what's next, what's next. And maybe that's the call that they think, hey, we outscale. And so let's just make sure that we're preparing for what's next. But at some point, you need to be able to take the fight. And this could be Gen G's adaptation, right? Gen G can say, we can learn too. If you're just always going to avoid fights and play side to side to side and just seesaw your ability, then the counter to that is to go ham and say, we're going to take everything. You saw there on the board, the, the top of mind notes. 
if they're going to be flaky and they're just always going to say we outscale, we'll set traps, we'll just move so that we're always strong in the next place, then the correct answer is, okay, then we'll actually follow through. Rather than just jab, jab, we're actually going to go and just straight up lead off with a haymaker and uh, and go right there. So I need to have Rakan ready for these fights. It's not just about the other side. You need to stay a little bit longer. But that does mean that maybe Gen G is right. I don't want to say where you want them, but Gen G is in the position where they might overcommit for that play. If they're saying, hey, we need to take a little bit more on the back of these plays, that just means that you need to be in position as five to punish. Probed with sec second item, Crypt Bloom. I'm not a huge fan of this. I'd like to see more AP. The Crypt Bloom is great. It's a great item. The extra ability haste lets you fly the shields around. Uh, but it tends to be a little bit early. I, I do like the Lucid Boots. More cooldowns, again, more shields to pass around. But this poke damage, right? You, you're not going to ever be able to match the poke from this versus Ezreal. You don't have it. So they're going to they're gonna like this sustained fight, plus how big Cassante is. We need to make sure that when you go in, that fight that needs to be massive. The shield needs to be so big that whoever's wearing it can turn around and hit back. Right, especially if it's someone like Renekton saying, hey, I want you to deliver this and I want you to feel strong. They may say all it's going to take is one fight and I just need the big heal because we, we are losing the chip damage. Saplings, spears, and arrows. And we need to be able to heal back up. We have Locket and we have Crypt Bloom. Right? So we're saying we want the protracted fight. We feel strong if we can get that sort of position but that's what we said you know this is FlyQuest's meta the tanky support items are better than they've ever been and that fits what they're trying to do but that does mean that you need to pick them up and you need to play into the positions they're strong all right Busio going in they're saying live and die by this he dashes forward they do get multi-man knockup Baron was not aggroed that entire time could have been an opportunity for them to deal more damage Masu's not dealing enough right now Whippo's going to move the bomb away uh Genji's too big it's too much. Oriana's down. They don't have it. Sana sidestep after do jumping in is something that he does every single time. I need more from Busio. And I'm worried about this guy's mental roller coaster. Right? It's here, here. We've seen that he's been hyphy in the past. And this is what we're worried about. This bit blip. Where it's like too much. It's too much of a roller coaster, too much of a shake. We'll keep on thinking about this game. They're still going for the defender, saying, you know what, you used a lot of resources here. Genji's correct response is to go for the fight. Sean's going to try to peel back, front to back. Masu gets picked off with the arrows, means he's going to be taken down. So they take that prize for themselves. They can still go back to the Baron. Respawns, though. A new. They might say, hey, let's go get resources for ourselves. We just picked up 5,000 gold. Let's go shop and just do it again. Make them come into us, uh, into our position. Uh, they're not going to wait. Never mind. Tristan is saying, let me go get my mana. I've got enough to carry right here. Two and a half items is big enough. But you know what? This gives a chance to fly quest. They did not go back and spend the entirety of their lead. Only Chovy has gone back and spent. All right, hold on. Keen just did as well. He's going in the backside, so they get the one pick on the quad. Nothing left. Good, good target mark from them. Good job teleporting behind the fight. Get a really good spot. You see Keen just dominating on this. We need more from Whippo. We need to reset Busio's mental. And 10 times out of 10, I want Masu on Ash, not on Ezreal. Who else can we go for? Right, we talked about it yesterday. Ash number one. I'd honestly... I mean, maybe they're saying that we actually need enough upfront up damage. If we're going to go to outscale anybody, we're never going to do it with Ziggs. But Ziggs, if if Gen G says, okay, I see that you're going to try to outscale us, we're just going to do it better than you for the next game, then the correct best answer is to actually flip the script back. There's a certain level. It's like, so in summary of like team fight compositions you basically have early game mid game late game and and this tends to be the way that the draft goes off and you'd want to be one higher than your opponent because if you go three and let's say next draft 
they go into it, Gen G goes and says, no, 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 we're going to outscale, then the actual correct answer is to double down right here. So if we can't get Callista, or if we can't get Ash, but we can get someone like Callista and actually play for a hyper-aggressive early game, or if we can get Ziggs, hyper-aggressive say, oh, you want to scale? You want to play with just your jungler to get, through, get you through? Well, let's pick three winning lanes and then take the jungler that's going to counter yours and just take every single fight for the whole game. That can be the correct answer against someone that's trying to go, all right, Renekton's in behind. I like that they're throwing their punch. It's going to be very difficult. Inspired eating up the majority of the damage, but Keen is forcing Masu off the damage, which means that there's going to be no fight here. Uh, you basically... Keen on Cassante just did exactly what you need to do in that position is threaten the backline. And because of the two thick walls, even though Renekton might feel like he got a really good flank off, and hey, this might be the position that we can get the Orianna ult, the fact that you don't have any follow-up damage, the fact that Masu is not dealing anything front to back is a problem uh, and and they just won't have enough to to consolidate all right we're taking another break game five 